Hello guys, in this video I'm going to talk about VPDT. This was a highly requested video so I hope you can find all this information useful. Let's start with the definition. What is DPDT? DPDT method is a parameter of myocardial contractility. With this parameter, we can assess the contractility of the left ventricle using echocardiography. This parameter describes the rate of pressure rise in the left ventricle during systole. When the left ventricular systolic function is normal, there is a rapid rise in left ventricular systolic pressure during systole. The rate at which the ventricular pressure rises is expressed by the term DPDT, which is the rate of change in pressure with time. If the left ventricular systolic function becomes impaired, the rate of rising pressure is slower, and therefore DPDT starts to fall. Here we can see the DPDT formula. DPDT is calculated from the slope of velocity between 1 and 3 meters per second by applying the following formula. So, to obtain the DPDT, we need the pressure number 2, which is the pressure at 3 meters per second, pressure number 1, which is the pressure at 1 meters per second, and we need the time in milliseconds, which is the time it takes to the velocity to rise from 1 to 3 meters per second. Because pressure number 2 is always going to be 36, and pressure number 1 is always going to be 4, we can use this simplified formula, 32 divided by the time. With this simplified formula, it's very easy to obtain the DPDT. We only have to measure the slope between 1 and 3 meters per second. And then divide 32 by the time it takes for the velocity to rise from 1 to 3 meters per second. So here I'm going to show you step by step how to measure the DPDT on your echocardiogram. First, place the continuous wave Doppler in the mitral regurgitation jet. The apical four chamber view is the best view to do this. It's highly recommended to set the sweep speed as high as possible to spread out the trace. Then, freeze the trace and measure the time interval between the mitral regurgitation jet velocity at 1 meters per second and 3 meters per second. In this video, I'm showing you how to measure the DPDT. As you can see, I have increased the sweep speed and I'm measuring the slope from 1 meters per second to 3 meters per second. Every method has their limitations. Here you can see some of the DPDT limitations. First, you need to have a mitral regurgitation. If you don't have a mitral regurgitation, you cannot measure the DPDT. Second, not only you need a mitral regurgitation, but you also need a good mitral regurgitation spectral signal. Third, this measurement is not reliable if the mitral regurgitation is acute. And fourth, this measurement is also not reliable if there is significantly increased afterload like in aortic stenosis or systemic hypertension. And here to finalize, we can see the normal DPDT values. 
Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and recommend this channel. Bye.